Happenings, a CTN exclusive. We know that in Christ, we have something that transcends things that divide, uh, whatever that might be. It doesn't have to be uh, skin color. It can be it can be whatever nation you're from. It can be whatever political view you have. It can be anything that might divide us. Christ transcends those things so that our identity is not in who we, what we look like. Our identity is not in how popular we are. Our identity is not in what job we have. Our identity is not our nationality. Our identity is found. We think about little David. Yeah. 
oh, David, wow, he must have been so brave. I wish I could have seen David. We think about all these people and we just imagine, we dream what it must have been like to have their faith, to have their courage, to have their conviction, to have God work miracles for them. But the Scriptures say to us, in James chapter 5, it says, Remember Elijah. Elijah, the man who stood there on the Mount Carmel. And as all the prophets of Baal were around trying to call on Baal, their God, to bring down fire on the altar. And they did all these different things that they could do to try to get the fire to consume the sacrifice. And then Elijah. Elijah says, Come, servants, pour on a bunch of water. Yeah, yeah. Now, you don't have to be very smart to know that water is not very kind to fire. Right. right? Those two don't mix very well. well. And he pours on water, water, water. So much water that all the way around, it's like a moat around the sacrifice. Yeah. 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 And then he just calls on the name of his God. Yeah. <sighs> the fire comes down, consumes the offering. Oh, my Elijah. And James tells us, you remember Elijah? He was a man. He was a human being just like you and me. Oh, uh oh. God wants us to have the faith of Elijah. God wants us to have the courage of a Joshua. God wants us to have the childlike faith of Abraham. God wants us to be brave and bold like little David. And God wants us to bring the Son of God, the answer to the world, the Savior of all mankind, into 2017. Hallelujah. Because Jesus did what He came to do. And now He's calling on us to do what He wants to do through us. Let's remember what Mary went through in Luke chapter 1. In verse 26, it says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. You remember what Nathaniel said about Nazareth? Hey, nothing good can come from Nazareth. He went to Nazareth? Wait, is this right? Is this not supposed to be Jerusalem? Somewhere important? He went to Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, Greetings, O favored one. That's you. That's me. You've been blessed. You're favored by God. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Yes, sir. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? How will this be since I'm just little old me? How will this be? I'm not a preacher. How will this be? I'm not a minister. I'm not a missionary. How will this be? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born with you will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, 
who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. Would you say that with me to the Lord? Behold, I am your servant. Behold, I am your servant. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. Now, Paul, writing to the Galatian believers, a couple of decades later, after, uh, well, actually, several decades later, after this word was given to Mary, he says in Galatians, the fourth chapter, in verse 18, it is always good to be made much of for a good purpose, and not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. The same impregnating of Mary by the Holy Spirit to carry forth and form within her the Christ child is the same work that God is trying to do in every Christian who calls upon His name. To say, I am working in you until Christ is formed in you. You think about what it's like to carry a child. I don't know from personal experience. About half of the people in the audience tonight do. But I do remember as we were having children that uh, after we found out we were expecting, we got a book that is very popular that's called What to Expect When You're Expecting. And so anxiously every week, as a new week passed, we would read the next week, week 20, and we would find out What's happening with the baby in week 20? How is it being formed? And you, you learn how big it is. You know, it starts out really small. Then it becomes the size of a green pea. And then it becomes the size of a lima bean. And then it becomes the size of a prune. And they compare it to all these small nuts and fruits and vegetables. Because <laughs> this is the best you know, picture for what we can get. How the baby is being formed. And you feel connected to the baby as it grows and as it's developing. And you learn, oh, this week the heart's starting to beat. Oh, this week the, the fingerprints are starting to develop. Oh, this week the, the brain is beginning its greater work. You learn each week as it forms. It forms over time. And the woman carries the child for around nine months. It doesn't happen overnight, does it? And sometimes, when we see, when we look at our own lives and we see, what fruit do I have to show for my life? Sometimes we get disappointed. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we stop believing that Jesus Christ could be formed in me. Maybe He could be formed in Pastor Jones. Right? Maybe He can be formed in Pastor Haley. Maybe He can be formed in someone else. All right, preacher. Me? It's just not happening. I don't see Jesus being formed in me. It takes time. As God molds us. As God shapes us. It doesn't just take nine months for us. It takes a lifetime. Amen. As I remember, my wife, we sometimes sing the song that she sang. It was her first solo. You got to hear her, probably her, I don't know, 500th solo. But her very first solo was he still working on me to make me what I will be? It took him how long? Just a week to make the moon and the stars. Just a, a week to make the moon and the stars. <laughs> Jupiter and Mars. <laughs> but he's still working on me. He's still working on you. Each one of us. He's not left you. In fact, God says. The work He began in you, He'll be faithful to complete it till the day of Christ Jesus. And God is, and the Holy Spirit is in anguish. He's in pregnancy 
to birth Jesus Christ in us. And he's rooting and he's in our corner as he sees the progress that we make. And, then, and he says, look, look what you're doing. Look, the light of Jesus Christ is shining through you. And he's cheering us on and he's behind us all the way. And then when we fall down, guess what he says? He says, a righteous man falls seven times, mm -hmm. but he gets back up. Yeah. He says, just get on back up. Yeah. He says, it doesn't matter that you fell. I knew you were going to fall. Everybody falls. The righteous man falls. The righteous woman will fall. You will fall. But will you get back up? Because He wants to form Christ in you. And in fact, the Bible tells us that it's through trial and tribulation that He molds us. And that He forms us through the hardships that we go through. That those hardships are not wasted, but they're redeemed by the work of Jesus Christ. So that as we go through those times when we're almost given to despair, if you'll keep going through, if you'll keep pushing through, if you won't give up, if you'll keep trusting, if you won't turn your back on the Lord, He's going to use that and He's going to refine you and your gold is going to come forth. And all the dross is going to be burnt away by the trial that you've gone through. And we know that as God is forming in us, and just as He formed in Mary the Christ child, we saw what Mary had to go through. <laughs> and again, we, on the male side of the gender, we don't have to go through that. But we do the best we can to try to bring comfort and joy uh, to our wives as they go through the process of pregnancy. It is not an easy process. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of anguish. Mary did not have an epidural. <laughs> and God does not give us spiritual epidurals sometimes. Sometimes He takes away the pain, but sometimes it's through the pain that the birthing comes about. God wants Christ to be formed in us. Amen. But we have to be like Mary and say, Lord, let it be. Let it be to me. I'm your servant. I'm not choosing when I'm going to have Christ be demonstrated in me. When He says, go, I need to go. When He says, speak, I need to speak. We are the servant of the Lord. And so every day, Christ being formed in us, we need to be like Mary and we need to come and say every day, Lord, will you form Christ into me? Here I am. Here I am. I'm yielded. Let the power of the Holy Spirit overshadow me. What do you want to do in me today? My life today is yours. That we wake up every morning, that we take time every day to bow our knees before God. To say, Father, here I am. I am your servant. Yes, yes. What do you want to say to me today? What do you want me to do today? How do you want to shape my character today? How do you want me to speak today? How should I think today? How should I react today? That we can't just look at look into uh, look down the quarter of what those days events are, and, and sometimes we think about how those difficult people in our lives might come across our paths, and we don't like them. Maybe we love them, but we don't like them. And how are we going to deal with that? And sometimes we say, "Well, I shouldn't say da 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 da." But how many times have you heard that? <laughs> Guilty. Yes. Uh, but to say, Lord, not what I want, but what you want. Amen. What I should say is what I will say. What I should do is what I will do by the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. that dwells within us. That every day we are proactive, that we come before God. And we ask Him, Lord, form Christ in me. Mm -hmm. 
That we're a willing vessel. That we're the, the, the clay allowing God to shape us. Not resisting. Not running away. Not hardening ourselves against Him, but saying, Lord, my life is Yours. Be formed in me. Are you living out of the One that also came alongside Mary and impregnated her with the child of Jesus? She couldn't bear a son on her own. She only had one part of the equation. You and I only have one part of the equation. God is not asking us to do it on our own. He's given us another helper. Amen. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit has been joined to your spirit. And if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you need to say, hello, Holy Spirit. He's there. Yeah, right. Welcome. Have your way in me. I may not know you very well, but I'm going to get to know you. Yes. I'm going to learn how to partner with you. I'm going to learn how to walk with you. I'm going to learn how to be yoked with you so that I'm working together with the Holy Spirit. Every day you need to live and breathe the Spirit of God, the breath of God. Yeah. He is in you. Call upon Him. Mm -hmm. Every day, every as you're going throughout your day, just ask the Holy, Holy Spirit. And guess what? He doesn't mind being involved in the little stuff. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Just help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord. Help me to have strength. I'm a little tired right now. Help me to remember what I need to remember. Help me to be able to do what you want me to do. Help me to be able to have a little more patience right now. Help me to be able, as I go into this meeting, to be able to do the best that I can do. Help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. He, he's there to be our helper. Yes. He's waiting for us to call for help. I don't think he likes it very much just kind of sitting back, not being invited to the party. I'm here to help you. I'm here to make Christ formed in you. Yes, sir. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, God, the Lord God, Yahweh, was revealed to us, was revealed to the Jews. In the New Testament, starting with the book of Matthew, Jesus, the Son of God, the eternal, pre-existent Word of God became flesh. We came to know the second person of the Trinity. And He came not to do His will, but to do the Father's will. That's right. And when He was on the cross... He said, it is finished. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after well, Jesus was died yes. and then resurrected, the promise of the Holy Spirit came on God's people. Yes, it did. This was the promise of the Holy Spirit that they had anticipated for years and years and years because they lived this existence when they knew that they were doing their best to try to keep God's law, but they always fell short. And God said, I'm going to make a new covenant in the book of Jeremiah. And he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to sprinkle your hearts clean. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. I'm going to write my law on your heart instead of on the tablets of stone. Yes. And the Holy Spirit was given. And Peter preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. And he said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will receive this promise of the Holy Spirit. For it is for you and your children and all who are far off. If you have believed in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is yours. And he is waiting. And he is working until Christ is formed in us. Right. Would you stand on your feet? Yeah. If you're living the Christian life, if you're living this life to see Christ,
Christ formed in you and you feel like, I am not making any progress. There's an offer for you tonight. There's a gift for you to receive this Christmas season. And it is through the one who was born 2,000 years ago. He wants to come into your life by the Holy Spirit. This is your night to receive that. And for all who have received, let's welcome him back into our lives. Let's say, Holy Spirit, I, I enthrone you in my life. Take the highest seat in my life. Take lordship in my life. Take leadership in my life. Sit on the throne and be the king of my life. Yes. Yes. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. And we ask, Lord, that Christ would be formed in us. Lord, we pray. Just pray right now where you are. And ask him, oh Holy Spirit, come and take control of my life. Oh Holy Spirit, birth in me your work in my life. Oh Holy Spirit, take me further than I could ever go on my own. Oh Holy Spirit, make me a witness unto Jesus Christ. Oh Holy Spirit, make me a light in the darkness. Oh Holy Spirit, use my mouth to speak your word. Oh Holy Spirit, use my hands to be the hands of Jesus Christ. Oh Holy Spirit, take my feet and lead me to where you want me to go. Oh Holy Spirit, let me have the eyes of compassion to love those who need love, to care for those who are hurting. Oh Holy Spirit, take my life. Take it, take it and let it be yours. Just continue to pray. Pray where you are. Pray in your heart. Pray with your words. However you want to pray, but just continue to ask the Holy Spirit. Yield your life to Him. Surrender your heart to Him. And if there's anybody here tonight who needs to come and say, I need the Holy Spirit in my life. I need Jesus Christ. Come. Come now. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love for you. To start your journey with Jesus Christ. God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Don't miss it. Don't leave here tonight without knowing that the Holy Spirit's in you and He's working to bring Christ to be formed inside of you. happening in your hometown. Wednesday, December 20th, 9 a.m.